Hey guys and welcome back to my channel! So for today's video we are going to be talking about ADHD versus sex. So what I want to talk about is kind of like your hypersexuality and hyposexuality. It comes in two different things, you know, you can either be one side of the scale or literally be the opposite side. You know, one could be have a really, really high sex drive and one could literally not have a sex drive at all and not be interested in intimacy. Either way is okay and today I'm going to tell you how ADHD affects sex life. But first, if you could smash me a big thumbs up down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, I'm trying to make my dream a reality. I'm trying to raise as much awareness of ADHD and I'm trying to be your voice. So, let's get on to the video. So, firstly, we're going to start by talking about hypersexuality. And hypersexuality means that you have an unusually high kind of sex drive and you kind of always want to be at it. So another quick fact about ADHD is that it's kind of kind of associated with a drop of neurotransmitters and when you're having sex it can you know it releases endorphins and it makes us feel good and it can actually balance out our neurotransmitters which is a good thing and that can be why sometimes people crave kind of stimulation in the sexual area. With hypersexuality comes a lot of dangerous risks and us ADHDers, we don't always think before we do things and it can lead to really dangerous consequences such as having unprotected sex, kind of having multiple sexual partners and it can lead to STDs or like breakdown of, of relationships, cheating, you know, things like this can happen in any relationship but when you have ADHD you have a little bit more of a chance of being, you know, of taking those risks because you crave to be stimulated and if you feel that you aren't being stimulated enough you can go out and kind of like seek that stimulation. So this is where I'm going to be using my own personal experiences to explain what hypo sexuality is. So with ADHD you know you can be hypersensitive which means that you may be really sensitive to kind of sensory issues you may you might not like being touched you know cuddled kissed because it can make you feel very uncomfortable and actually it can be super annoying it can make you feel dirty and like you just don't want it and that is okay again either way of this scale if you're hyposexual or hypersexual let me just say you are you and you don't need to explain you don't need to feel bad because actually either way is okay you don't need to ever say sorry or apologize neither one of the side of the scale is right or wrong just, just remember that so i grew up kind of not reaching sexual milestones um, alongside my peers there were some people who lost their virginity at school college after college and I'm not prepared to uh, open up and tell you my sexual history because again you know that's super personal and, I, and I'm not I'm not open to that I don't want to I don't want to dive too deep into my sexual life but you know I didn't reach them when other people did and I started to lie and mask and tell people yeah I've done this I've done this I've done this I've slept with them because I felt like I was not reaching a you know, I just felt really bad. I thought I was dumb. I thought I was ugly, fat. You know, my self-esteem kind of plummeted because I thought I wasn't good enough. No one wanted to sleep with me. No one wanted to do this. No one wanted to do that. But in actual fact, I had... Uh, not many, because that makes... I had I had a few boyfriends growing up. Like, I had um, a serious one um, once I left school um, when I was, like, 16, 17. And, you know, I thought I loved this boy. Like, I was, like, planning my whole my whole life with this guy i never had the desire to um you know sleep with him or be intimate with him in any other way you know i kissed him and stuff but that was because i felt like i had to because i felt that i needed to because that's what you men are doing relationships right but you know i never felt comfortable and i used to make my i used to make myself do things because I knew that if I didn't, people were going to think I'm strange, I'm weird. So I used to lie and just pretend that I did stuff because I didn't want to look stupid compared to anybody else. And this has caused a lot of anxiety on my behalf. I felt like I was carrying around like loads and loads of like rocks on my back. Like I felt like I had the whole world on my shoulders at one point. I was worrying like 
why do I not want to have sex? It has caused a lot of issues within my own mind that I, I had to open up and tell someone because I was actually becoming depressed about this. I was worried sick about this. And people like that I was friends with at the time would joke and say, oh yeah, yeah, you, why aren't you doing this? Or why aren't you doing that? Or like, you know, there was only a handful of people that knew the true Molly. And even that, you know, people took advantage of that. And they used to make jokes on my behalf about my sexual life and like me reaching milestones or me not reaching milestones for, for that, you know. But, you know, and I remember remember someone saying something to me once like well like they're just joking around but it, it hurt me and it's it has stuck to me to this day this is why i'm telling you because it is so important that people do not ever throw around words that can be super hurtful someone once said to me well you must be gay if you haven't had sex because again even if i was it has nothing to do with anybody else you know my life is my life and i, I mean i'm not gay i'm not but this is my experience and i'm, I'm just saying people there was one person that threw that at me and kind of made me feel like, I don't know, I felt stupid, dumb, ugly. I felt that I wasn't good enough because, well, I haven't had sex, so does that mean I'm gay? I'm up, like, like, things were spiraling out of control in my head and I had to speak up. So I actually spoke to my mum about this the day that I was going to be diagnosed with ADHD. The day that I went to the doctor, I thought, you know what? If I can't tell my mum, then I'm never going to tell anyone. So I opened up to my mum and, and I was like scared. Like, I was deep down scared because I thought oh, someone, she was going to say something to me like, like that person did. They were going to they were gonna tell me I'm gay when I know I'm not. You know, I, I was literally petrified at what my mum would think of me because I know from experience other people as assume things and they're hurtful things, you know. You know, I, and, and, and I just wanted to say to my mum, I'm not gay. Like, and I kept saying it because people kept, as, like, associating me with being gay because I didn't want, I, you know, I might not have reached the milestones they had met. But my mum being the absolutely, you know, queen she is, she was totally, like, supportive of me. And, you know, she has never once ever said anything along the lines of, like, you know, any. she just, she just never had questioned my feeling she's never made me feel that i'm weird or i'm wrong or anything like that she's always you know always been by my side and i needed that as 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 me you know i needed that deep down i needed to tell someone what i was worried about because it was hurting me it was depressing me because i didn't know that i was oh it was okay to be hyposexual where i didn't want to be intimate with people i didn't like it and if i was intimate with someone you know and i don't even mean sexual i mean like holding hands cuddling kissing someone if i was that was because i had to be because i thought i had to be and i wanted people to think that i was normal but within that whole thing i was hurting myself i was making myself feel uncomfortable so what i want to get out here is regardless if you're intimate with someone or not you deserve to have respect you are not weird if you don't want to be having sex then you tell someone, you stick up for yourself, you don't ever let anyone take control of you. You are, you know, you're your own person and you need to speak your mind, you need to say, no, hang on, I'm not comfortable with that. Because if you don't ever do something because you feel like you have to, because that's not okay. So being sexual with someone and intimate is something that, you know, it makes you very vulnerable as a person. You have to open up and let someone else, you know, within your, you know, your security bubble. And that's what I don't like. I don't like letting people in to, me i don't you know i'm very I, I, don't, I don't know you know i don't know what it is again i've never spoken to a professional because it's not something i want to talk about but when i spoke to my mum you know we had a chat we googled it we looked we read up on it and it's totally normal and this is things that people don't talk about and i want to talk about it because i know i will not be the only one that has you know sat in a group full of your peers your friends your family and you know people say oh where's your boyfriend how can you haven't got a boyfriend have you had you know these questions that family members sometimes ask and they don't mean it in a bad way but these flipping questions like, oh where's your girlfriend where's your boyfriend oh blah blah, blah. it can be really hurtful and i just want to say either way if you're in a friendship group and they're talking about their sex life or whatever you don't have to ever ever lie don't make the mistake I did because it gets tricky to keep up with all these lies. You know, I masked who I was because I didn't want to, I didn't want to tell the truth. I was embarrassed, but I, I want you to know you do not have to be embarrassed. It's not right, nor is it wrong. If you are you and just be you because you are good enough. And if someone can't respect you for your, you know, your ethics and your needs, then 
absolutely, you know, get the hell out of that friendship group. Like, seriously. Regardless if you're hyper or hyposexual, you need to make sure you are in control of yourself. You don't do what you don't want to do. If you're hypersexual, you need to make sure that you're not pushing someone into doing something they don't want to do. You know, and if you're hyposexual, I want you to realise you don't have to do stuff. You know, you have to respect yourself and respect other people. Both ways, hyposexual, you're going to have to realise that if you don't have a partner, if you have a partner that may not be hot, like hyposexual but a hypersexual or just the average type of sexual, you're going to have to, you're going to have to know that their needs, they're going to have needs. And I want you to know that, yes, okay, you need to, you need to be comfortable but also you have to speak to them about how you can make them kind of feel intimate or or happy and like their needs have been met without kind of making yourself feel uncomfortable. So basically what I'm trying to say is have respect for yourself and your partner because that is super important because you don't want to be getting in trouble for making someone do something they don't want to do because obviously that is a very topic that I'm not going to talk about because there's younger people on here and I, and I, and I don't want to talk about that because again I just don't want to talk about it. And so yeah, what you got to realise is you could be hyposexual and your partner might not be as sexual as you, you know, and if your partner isn't up for it, then you don't do it. You know, no is no and there, uh, if, you know, there is no other word. There's, no literally means no. If, you, if that person doesn't want to have sex, you don't do it. You, you know, you, you just, no. Again, on the hypo side, you have to realise that there are going to be kind of ways that your partner are, is going to need to be kind of, um, kind of, um, kind of pleasured, I guess that's the word. I mean, I'm not sure. Again, like, this is super awkward for me. <laughs> you know, you have to realise that obviously on the high po side, you might not be sexual, you might not be up for it as much as this other person, but you've got to know that obviously your partner's needs are going to have to be met and that doesn't mean you have to do anything, but they, um, again, I, I just go buy a magazine. That's what I'm just trying to say. Just... You know, I, I, yeah. But just because you're hyposexual, I want people to know that it doesn't mean you're not interested in sex, but your sexual kind of activity could be sporadic. You might feel like it one day, you might not feel like it the next. You know, it could plummet, it could like become, mm, like our moods, they're just kind of thing, okay? Just because you're hyposexual doesn't mean you don't want to have sex. And just because you're hypersexual doesn't mean you want to be at it like rabbits every five seconds. It just means we kind of, this this end of the scale might need to be pleasured a bit more than this side of the scale. And this side of the scale might not need to be pleasured as much as this side of the scale. And I'm going to stop here because I'm getting, I'm just going around in bloody circles now. But just remember, either way isn't right, isn't wrong. You're you, you be you. Make sure you're not hurting anyone else. You're respecting other people and you'll be absolutely fine. Never be ashamed of, again, either end of the scale, it's you. Make sure your partner's aware, communicate. And I tell you what, you'll be absolutely hunky-dory. You'll be absolutely fine. But this is just a subject that I know not a lot of people speak about, so I wanted to kind of jump on here and talk about this taboo subject. For any questions you want me to ask, you would drop them down below, or you can contact me on my Instagram, which again, I'm gonna drop here. So yeah, that's it basically, you, you know. Sorry for the raunchy and cheeky subjects, but you know, I know that other people um, might be kind of ashamed to talk about it, and I want them to know there's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. <gasps> Bye. Oh yeah, wait a minute. Don't, <laughs> don't forget to smash me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because again, like you know, I'm trying to make my dream a reality. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.